So I'm back uh, where we left off, uh, north of Charlotte, North Carolina. And I'm going to use this tutorial to highlight a few more features of Transmodeler. On the agenda, we talked about, or, or we included, uh, traffic impact analysis and signal optimization. So I'm going to talk about uh, a few of those features and, as Tom mentioned, hopefully leave some time for questions. Um, let's start with uh, traffic impact analysis. Uh, but before I open up that toolbox, I want to just highlight again uh, that, that in Transmodeler, microsimulation is really the nucleus, if you will. It's the the central feature of the product and all of the other um, tools that we're showing you now play some supporting role that either en enhance or complement uh, or leverage the micro simulation in some way. So in the case of traffic impact analysis, what we're doing is using traffic impact analysis tools to help us develop inputs for uh, scenarios in which a proposed development will be uh, will be fully constructed and the trips that it's uh, expected to add uh, will be present on the network and will impact operations in some way and we'll use micro simulation to ascertain what those impacts will be. So for this uh, exercise, I'm gonna hide the uh, Google satellite imagery just to unclutter the map. And I'm gonna stick with Poplar Tent Road, which is the corridor I described earlier and Let's look at the uh, Google map as a background. I'm going to suppose that uh, north of Poplar Tent Road uh, and north of the regional airport, uh, south of the road, uh, a new development is going to be proposed at this, this driveway in the center of the map. And let's suppose they're proposing to build a supermarket, uh, a restaurant, and a gas station at this site. So what we'll do is open uh, the traffic impact analysis tools. And when we do that, Transmodeler is going to ask us where we want to get our trip generation rates from. And that rate data can come from uh, the ITE trip generation manuals, either fifth through 10th editions. Or if you have local uh, trip generation rate data, you can also supply that data. Um, so I'll say, and that data will be supplied in a custom rate table, and the tools that I'm about to show you can be used to enter those, those trip rates. So I'll say OK, and it's going to ask me to create a new uh, land use table. I'll overwrite this previously existing one. The sites are placed at what we call, using what we call centroids, and, that, and they use centroid connectors to identify the driveways or roads where traffic can enter our network from from the proposed site. Um, they can also represent parking lots or parking garages or centroids of traffic analysis zones. So centroids basically can serve as generic origins and destinations of trips. In this case, they represent the traffic impact site. So I'll click in the map where we want to create this new site. And a, a gold circle is placed around the site. And we can enter a name for our new development. And we'll add the land uses that are being proposed for this site. So click choose land uses and we'll, uh, we can sort or search the a filtered list of the land uses that the ITE trip generation manual supports. So we'll look for supermarket by typing that in, into the filter box highlight it and add it to our list. Do the same thing for a gas station, which we'll add to our list. And lastly, a restaurant. We'll assume a fast casual restaurant will be built. Add it to our list and click OK. And these will be added to the table. And <clears throat> Transmodeler, by way of the ITE trip generation data, we'll recognize each of these as uh, as retail or restaurant or other land use types. And we'll be able to calculate internal capture uh, based on NCHRP 684. Or if you want to enter your own capture rates, uh, you can provide those as well. 
So a land use type is associated with each of these land uses. And trip generation rates, uh, since the uh, ITE trip generation manual 10th edition, can also belong to one or more settings. Uh, that can be a general urban suburban setting, which applies here, or a dense multi-use urban setting, or there may be um, university campus settings, et cetera. So for each one of these, we could enter a name of the, the establishment, the supermarket or the gas station or the restaurant if we'd like. And we can choose which independent variable we want to use to drive the trips that were generated from this site. Um, so for each one of these sites, that could be a uh, thousand, uh, sorry, square footage per thousand square feet. Some number of trips are generated to, uh, generated by or attracted to the site. Um, for other land uses, such as gas stations, we might use vehicle fueling positions, for example. Um, so we'll enter some, uh, the, the square footage here for our supermarket and fast casual restaurant and a number of fueling positions at the proposed gas station. And using the ITE trip generation rates, that'll calculate a number of trips generated by the site, which will then be divided into a number of trips incoming to the site and a number of trips outgoing from the site using a, a, a rate that also derives from the, the trip generation data. Um, but we can override those percentages by typing in new values here if we'd like. These rates are going to be based on the analysis period that we're using. So by default here, it's assuming that the trip generation is based on an AM peak hour of the adjacent street. Okay. If we want to reduce the, the number of trips that are produced by the site to account for alternative modes, say some of these trips may come via transit um, or potentially walk trips, we could enter a, a reduction rate here. So for example, if some, maybe 2% of trips uh, will come by transit and so won't generate new car trips to or from uh, the supermarket, we could enter that. And we can also indicate a percentage of trips on Poplar Tent Road that are pass-by trips, which is to say they aren't new trips on the road, they're existing trips that will decide on passing by the site that they'd like to stop and shop for groceries, get a bite to eat, or fill up on gas. So let's assume that 5% of the trips already on Poplar Tent Road might pay a visit to the gas station. Um, okay. So the next, uh, so thus far, we've got through uh, the pass-by uh, percentages and the reductions for alternative modes. And there will always be a summary of the total trips generated incoming to the site and outgoing uh, in the trip generation summary above the table. If we want to go a step further through um, internal capture, um, we could choose to compute the internal capture from the NCHRP 684 method, and that will result in some reduction of the total vehicle trips incoming and outgoing. So let's go back to the trip generation tab. Um, if we want to know more about any one of these particular sites, um, we can click the land use info button to the right, and that's going to provide information from the ITE trip generation manual um, relating to the data sources from which these rates are obtained, how many uh, studies the data comes from, um, things of that, of that nature. For any given site, you might use either an average rate or a linear regression, um, but one or the other will typically be recommended based on some rules of thumb that are laid out in the uh, trip generation manual. So Transmodeler adheres uh, to, to all of that uh, protocol uh, and recommends either an average rate or linear regression. Um, and if we had local data that we wanted to use to override this ITE data, 
we could choose to customize the land use and enter our own rates or our own regression coefficients. Um, and that's how you would build up your custom rate table uh, if they're used in your locality. So I'll cancel out of this. Um, having provided all of the uh, inputs now, Transmodeler can produce trips to be simulated one of several ways um, through different distribution methods. So if we had input turning volumes for all of the intersections in this model, we could use those as background turning volumes and we could produce trips to and from the site that basically come and go in, in the same turning percentages as the background traffic. Um, since this model is based on an OD matrix that doesn't have those volumes, we have other options, which is to draw manually the paths to and from the different origins and destinations, producing trips coming to or, or going from the site. Um, if we don't want to prescribe multiple paths per origin and destination, we could just set up a manual distribution by origin and destination. And lastly, sort of a, a novel idea here is if you had uh, the same model in uh, a, a planning model for the region, you could do a sub-area analysis and have a matrix for the sub-area, and you could assume the distribution of trips to the different external stations of your sub-area, uh, assume it follows the same pattern as the regional model. You could also potentially have a matrix you've developed from Streetlight or some other source and use those to distribute the trips uh, between different origins and destinations. But I'll do a quick uh, distribution based on uh, manual origins and destinations just to show you what that looks like. I'll just highlight a few of the major uh, points of origin in the interests of time. Let's say we have trips that might potentially come from one of these nodes in the network. So as I click on a node at the boundary of the network, sorry for the screen jumping around a bit, it's gonna draw an arrow from that origin to the site, indicating that I'm populating origins for incoming trips. Let's just add one more for the Southern freeway boundary. And then similarly for destinations, any node that might serve as a destination for trips leaving the site can be identified by clicking in the map. And then we can enter our percentages, which will show up as a sum. At the bottom, so we have a sum of shares of 37 so far. Let's make sure they sum up to 100%. There we go. Enter some shares for the other direction. Okay, so now I've got 100% of my trips accounted for uh, from the site and to the site, and then I can choose to distribute traffic, and that will produce another either turning volume table or trip matrix. We can choose which format uh, we want to use. So this is, uh, let's choose matrix as our input. It's going to ask now if we want to use that matrix to define trips in our scenario. So if we answer yes to that question, then it's going to add it back in our project settings, that matrix as an additional input. However, let's assume this is our existing condition, pre-development. And we'll wanna add a new scenario with the development. In which that matrix is, uh, the trips from that matrix are simulated. So I'll go back to our original existing condition pre-development and remove that matrix from the scenario. So now I have two scenarios, one with and one without the trips. We say, okay, let's go back. 
close the toolbox, and now switch our scenario to that new scenario that has the new development trips, which we can do quickly from the project scenario menu, and start our simulation. And now our simulation will include all of the trips that this site is generating in, just, in addition to the original background uh, matrix that was originally estimated for uh, for the model. And we can simulate both scenarios and compare the performance measures uh, for each to see whether any mitigation measures are warranted uh, at the site. So that's just a quick overview of the uh, traffic impact uh, analysis tools. 